extraordinary thing about this novel, it was written by Irene Nemirovsky, and she um, died in the, in, at Auschwitz in 1942, I think. And the book was only discovered in a suitcase in the attic by her daughter. Um, and it was an unfinished novel um, written in tiny little writing on pieces of paper. And um, it described the, uh, the beginning of the occupation and the exodus of Paris, the people fleeing the occupying army. I see everything that goes on in this house. Please, he only asked to go into the garden. You should have stood up and left. Do you expect me to be confined to my bedroom? I expect you went? to be a faithful wife. I am. Then how can you speak? How can you even breathe when you know that your husband has been hunted down by these animals? When I see them, I want to rip their eyes out. And the extraordinary thing is, this book was written, it, it's a work of fiction, and she wrote it during yeah. the war, yeah. at the height of the war. Mm. The story has a sort of a glimpse of humanity, really, for the Nazi soldier. Yeah. That is what is extraordinary, especially when you think what happened to the writer afterwards. Um, she does manage to show um, characters who are more often portrayed as sort of black and white evil um, collaborators or uh, Nazi officers or Nazi soldiers are very often portrayed in the accounts of that time as sort of simple baddies. Um, but here we really see how people, uh, normal, ordinary people, can be driven to appalling behaviour. You know, people do terrible things. There are themes in it which are very resonant still with modern day France, mm. notably anti-Semitism. Yes, there's been a sort of surge in anti-Semitism all over Europe and in France it's been particularly spectacular. The level of intolerance um, at the moment is is something that I've, I've never sort of imagined possible even. Do you think that the Charlie Hebdo attacks and the attacks on the Jewish supermarket, have they united France or divided it even more? To begin with, there was a great feeling of um, solidarity and uh, a great sort of surge in a feeling of we are France, we can beat this. But then little by little, it, the cracks have appeared and you see that the people actually are quite divided about it all still. Is any of that part of the reason that you have chosen to come back to the UK? No, no. Part of the, the reason I chose to, to come back to the UK have been domestic reasons um, and uh, primarily because of the work that I love to do takes place here and that's working in the theatre in London. And that is what you're uh, doing again. You were <laughs> yes, I very successful stop. last year. You, it, well, you yeah, got I've the just audience. finished. Yeah, I just finished a lecture at the Old Vic, and um, we finished that just before Christmas. And I'm about to embark on um, the audience, the Peter Morgan play. So, working on those rehearsals, how is that going? How are your we preparations going? We haven't started going? yet. My preparations at the moment is I'm sort of, I'm wallowing in documentaries about the Queen, <laughs> looking at lots and lots of pictures and. Um, reading biographies and actually really enjoying it and falling more and more and more in love with the Queen. <laughs> and you're going to have a, a close encounter with her even sooner than that in that you're going to the palace, aren't I you? I know. You've it's been made so a dame. Exciting. Yes, I what have. Is, what I've been made that, a dame. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's really thrilling. It's, um, what does it mean to me? It, um, I feel I'm privileged. I feel, um, I don't think there are any perks involved. Somebody said you can get an upgrade on BA. I'll just have to try that. You come alive when you talk about the theatre. You've been quoted as saying <laughs> you've given up on film. Is that really true? I mean, you've got, what, 70 under your belt or something oh, like that? Oh, don't. I know. Well, wouldn't you give up after 70 or something? <laughs> um, I have been tempted recently to do another one. Oh. I'm very good at doing a certain type of thing. So people will always want you to do what you're good at. It's natural, um, and it just gets really boring. So I prefer to do something that is um, more exciting for me, takes more risks, and and in taking more risks um, with directors or with characters or with you know the characters you portray, then you um, risk failure. I mean that's the whole point, um, and I found recently that the films that I've done through choice because they were so much more exciting have not been successes 
Um, but it won't stop me from keeping doing them because I just enjoy it so much. And I won't bore you with all the stories about older women not getting jobs in films and everything like that. It's oh, so boring. But it's true. <laughs> you know, it's a disaster. Well, why is it boring then? Well, because it's, because it's never going to change. Really? Nah. Why? Um, I was just, be, you know, until, until we all probably grow to, you know, the average um, lifespan is 150 years or something. I don't think women in their 50s are going to be considered at all viable. I think it's just, some, it's just, that's what it is. Sorry.